Hi everyone, welcome. This is Amy Cooper with Rise and we are interviewing exceptional women in insurance. And so joining me today is Charmaine Rice. Welcome Charmaine. Thank you so much, Amy. Definitely glad to be reconnected with you and with the Rise community. And we are happy to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about your role, where you work for those who aren't familiar? Absolutely. So I am the SVP of Learning, Development and Diversity for AmTrust Financial. I'm actually seated in Cleveland, Ohio. AmTrust, however, is a global organization. And in terms of what I do, easier question to answer might be, what don't I do? But I see my role as uh, supporting the business, supporting the amazing colleagues that I have here at AmTrust, with just uh, finding ways that we can be more inclusive, that we can demonstrate our commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, that we can provide um, learning opportunities for our workforce, and then also opportunities to develop or enhance our cultural competence as an organization. That's awesome. Uh, that is actually a really excellent role. So I, I know you also have an amazing personal life. Can you tell me how do you maintain with you know all those hats, <laughs> work-life balance or any tips? Yeah, so work-life balance is so funny uh, because I don't know that the scale I ever feel is truly balanced. What I have learned to do over the course of my career is to make sure that my yeses mean yes and my noes mean no. And so what I mean by that is there are sometimes, um, particularly early on in my career, I am um, a mom of two amazing sons and I also have a bonus son that I met once he was an adult. Uh, but while I was raising my sons, um, I, I was divorced and so I was primarily responsible and thinking about what that meant in terms of being available to them to cheer them on at games and also balancing a fairly full work schedule meant just being very clear on the things that I could take on over and above work. So board opportunities, I had to be a little bit more selective early on in my career. And now I have a little bit more bandwidth because I'm, a, I'm an empty nester. So just finding that balance, uh, making sure that the things that I'm participating in over and above work are things that fill my cup versus depleting my cup. Uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, I, I get to say no to everything that I don't want to do. Um, but I am very selective about the things that I take on like I said, over and over and above work. Well, we are really glad that one of those things is volunteering for the RISE advisory board. So thank you for that. Um, Absolutely. So if you were going to say a superpower, what your superpower would be? So that's so funny. My superpower is inclusion. And I actually have that on a t-shirt courtesy of an organization called the Winters Group. They have that available. And I'm like, oh, I need that shirt. It says inclusion is my superpower. Um, Amy, I know that you know this, but I was a military brat. And so growing up, I was always either the new kid or welcoming the new kid to the table. And that really taught me the value of getting to know folks, particularly folks outside of our family bubble or, or community bubble, um, learning more about different cultures and what individuals honor or celebrate. Uh, for instance, yesterday, I think it was yesterday was the first day of Ramadan. And so just understanding the significance of that. Um, we've done Lunar New Year celebrations here at AmTrust. And these are all things that I have had insight into just from having conversation with folks. Uh, so inclusion, I would say, is my superpower. That's amazing. I love that. Um, is there a defining moment that you could point to that played a crucial role in your success in your career? So I would say there are a number of smaller moments over the course of my career where in the moment it might have just felt like a, a little bit of a nudge or in some cases a prick. Um, <laughs> but learning through those and um, being very intentional about reflection, I think, has helped. Um, one thing in particular that stands out is that I, I worked for someone who um, very much felt like a self-made leader, that they had ascended to their role um, on their own merit with no support from others. Um, and because of that, they were 
they were they tended to hold things closer to the vest i guess is the best way to say it they weren't often one to lend a supportive hand or guidance um, and so from a defining moment perspective i would say that i took that experience and it taught me all of the leadership attributes that i did not want to possess right and so being very intentional about checking in with folks asking how they're doing asking how i can support them helping people um, identify their own solution, but letting them know that they weren't in it by themselves. Those are all things that I began to do, really leading with more intentionality and a deliberation around, first of all, showing up to support the team. Um, and then from, from there, um, helping the thought partner. So that was probably the most significant defining moment is learning the things that I wanted to do. That's so great. Right. Yeah, sometimes it's easier to tell who we don't want to be than who we do want to be. So that, that's good that you got that figured out. Um, is there ever been a point in your career that you encountered gender bias? Could you share about that? I would say probably related to the, the prior scenario that I described. Um, the leader that I had at that particular time was another woman and actually a Black woman. And because of that, I think just experiencing some of that, um, the, the residue that comes from being one of the few or the only, um, that, was, that was really the only time, just really being very specific about uh, stating that you know, she had gotten to the role that she had gotten to on her own. On the flip side, I would say, I think one of the differentiators for me, as I'm familiar with the insurance industry through RISE and through several other um, industry organizations, uh, my role is a little bit different than some of the traditional insurance roles, right? I'm in shared services. And so uh, being part of an HR team, being part of a learning and development or diversity team, um, I don't know that I've experienced some of the, the gender biased that others uh, who are actually in a sales or claims organization might relate to in a different way. Yeah, well, you are lucky in that standpoint, but um, the other experience, I think it just speaks to, you know, now as we continue to move forward and it is Women's History Month, wanting to, you know, put your hand out and help the next women like come up and bring them yeah. along with us. So, um, yeah. You know, Amy, also, I, I should say, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention at Amtrust, our workforce, our global workforce is 55% women. And so as you say that, that absolutely resonates because we are very intentional. We have seven employee networks. The first of which we launched was our women's network. And it's open to individuals who identify as women as well as their allies. And we've been very deliberate and intentional about creating that space where folks can come together, where they can talk, where they can share. And um, it's all about educating, empowering, and engaging one another. Absolutely. That's great to hear. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're familiar with the RISE Mentorship Program, and we've talked a lot about mentorship. Can you tell me from your perspective how important is mentorship and has it impacted your career? Uh, mentoring to me is critical. Um, so I would say that for any organization that has not yet taken the time to learn about the RISE Mentoring Program, they should. Um, it's one of the most comprehensive programs, and I'm not just saying that in front of you, I say that behind your back too, uh, but it's one of the most comprehensive and well thought out programs that I've participated in. You know, my first mentoring experience very early into my career, approximately nine months into my first formal role outside of college, I was invited to participate in a management training program, which included a mentoring component. Uh, my mentor at that time identified me to work with because they were an executive vice president for Consumer Bank. I was in financial services. Uh, there weren't a lot of women and there weren't a lot of people of color in his organization. And he wanted to learn a little bit more and develop relationships. Um, he didn't tell me that going into it, which I appreciate because I wouldn't have wanted to feel like a token, but there was an intentionality there. And again, the lesson for me is how important it is sometimes to have mentors that absolutely relate to your walk, to your experience, where you're at in your career. Uh, but sometimes that's not an option. And so it's also important that we consider diversifying our mentors 
and um, mentoring with someone who doesn't look like us or who doesn't love like us or who has um, a different skill set, maybe something that we're trying to develop. Um, and so I, that was definitely the case for art. Art was that first mentor for me, um, but definitely the intentionality around it. Uh, we have a mentoring program at Amtrust, which is equally dynamic, um, and it helps individuals learn and navigate a little bit more about the organization, the culture, um, some, of, some of the written and unwritten uh, rules and expectations. But the RISE mentoring program, this is my second time participating as a mentor, and it's been so great just to have uh, the opportunity for mutual mentoring to learn from the person that I'm working with. Actually, it might be my third time. I, I, I have to go back and check the stats. You're definitely a, a repeat. We are so happy to have you. I'm very thrilled. Yes. And, and thank you so much for joining me today and talking about your career journey. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate the series. I love these shorter TED Talk uh, interviews and definitely honored to have time to uh, just tout the praises of of RISE, you and Katerina and the rest of the advisory board and all of the members and the effort that we're making together to really shift the insurance community. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And for everybody watching, just continue to follow RISE Professionals for more exceptional women in insurance this Women's History Month.